this new Junji Ito series? It's not good. At this point, I'm starting to think Junji Ito is just one of those authors whose work is either way too difficult to animate or just cursed to forever have sh adaptations. We'll get to you in a bit. But as the title of this video implies, I took the time to watch and endure each episode of Junji Ito Maniac so you don't have to. On this episode of Jump Report, I'll try my absolute best to give you my take on the good and mostly bad of this series, along with some of my thoughts about adapting Ito's work. Starting off with the good, comparatively, Maniac is a step up in quality from the Ito collection, but that's not really saying much, is it? If we were to quantify this step up, I would say it's like a half step or a step made by a small dog. Anyways, another positive quality that Maniac has is that it somewhat retains the suspense and scares of Ito's storytelling. There were few instances where I actually was on edge trying to figure out what was going to happen next or where the story would go. However, that isn't necessarily a mark to the anime's credit, I'm more so giving props to Ito himself as opposed to the actual studio who made this, since they're only adapting his story but not necessarily enhancing it consistently. When the episodes cover a dark humor or a more lighthearted subject matter, such as Soichi trolling his brother, the experience of watching Maniac tends to be better since the horror doesn't feel entirely compromised in these episodes. Also, with some episodes, there is an attempt at providing stylistic elements such as changing the aspect ratio of the episode or adding a grayscale. I can at least give a nod to the studio for taking some time and consideration to throw these elements into the show. That's all I have for the good. Now for the bad. Okay, starting off, the opening. Visually, it's very pleasing and the intro song is great, but it doesn't fit the feel I have when reading a Junji Ito novel. When I think of Junji Ito, I think of something like Selected Ambient Works Volume 2, not Chainsaw Man OST, the B-sides. Another thing about this opening is that there is a heavy emphasis on Tomie in it. She's literally everywhere in this opening. The only problem is that this is not a Tomie anime. This is an anime adapting a collection of Ito's works, and while yes, Tomie is there, her story doesn't come in until episode 9. I get Tomie's inclusion makes for a strong selling point to get people to watch Maniac, but a lot of the other works featured in this anthology series are pretty iconic and should get some spotlight or reference in the intro too. This next complaint I have is related to the way I watch the series. If you watch Junji Ito Maniac and you just hopped around to check out the manga you liked get animated, you probably didn't face this problem. I however watched each episode in chronological order and to be honest, I have a problem with the sequencing of the episodes, but let me explain why I do. After the Ito collection was released, the last impression we had about animated Ito was not very high, so wouldn't it make more sense to have a stronger story be the first shown? I'd argue a story like The Hanging Balloons, The Thing That Drifted Ashore, or Resident Evil 7 should have been the first episode. If we were to play devil's advocate and also assume that this anime was good, we would want to instill confidence in our viewers and show them that although the last Ito animated outing was bad, we were able to make something better and provide a great take on a beloved Ito story. The first story that is presented to us isn't bad per se, I just think it falls more within the realm of dark campy humor and less so the genuinely creepy nature of Ito's stories that I and many others know him for. Dark campy humor is perfectly fine, I just don't think that was the best choice for tone for the first episode. Speaking of the hanging balloons, let's talk animation. It's pretty much set in stone that Ito's work is difficult to animate. It also doesn't help that Ito is one of those manga artists that take full advantage of working only with black and white when drawing. In a way, it reminds me of Kishimoto who constantly would push the boundaries in a lot of his black and white illustrations. So it's definitely bizarre seeing color added to Ito's stories, something that's addressed in the Uzumaki anime we'll get to you in a bit. When talking about animation, I would like to use the hanging balloons as my primary example. This story, when presented in manga form, was genuinely creepy, with how the balloon doppelgangers would stalk their victims and even try to trick them by mimicking voices of people close to the victim. However, in the anime... The use of CGI is not only lazy, but 
so jarring it removes any suspension of disbelief, ruining the original mood of the manga. It's used a lot in Maniac as a crutch to save time animating, and I get why some projects do that on minor occasions, but the 2D animation on display here isn't even that phenomenal, and the CGI that's also on display here is just really f bad. I remember a scene where a car was driving through a tunnel, but it looked like the car wasn't actually moving anywhere, and it didn't help that the walls of the tunnel that were moving by were probably only like 3-4 to four frames of animation. I get that this was for a 5 second or so scene, but it was just so jarring that I couldn't help but notice it. For some reason, the thing that drifted ashore episode has CGI fish. Like, was it too difficult to just draw 2D fish and have them swim around? A lot of the time when watching this show, there were scenes that were shown with intentions to shock you. However, when I was watching, all I could think was, huh, this probably looked better in the manga. Overall, the animation for Junji Ito Maniac was very lazy and remarkably bad. I don't know why these manga artists, known for having beautiful and highly detailed art, get not just mid-anime adaptations, but really bad ones. And unfortunately, Japanese Tales of the Macabre is no exception. It's watchable, but do you actually want to watch it like I did? So to prevent ending this video on a negative note, I want to go on to talk about my personal outlook on Ito animated adaptations in general. Right now, we're 0-2 on Ito show adaptations, so at this point, I would highly encourage anyone to check out the manga versions of these stories instead. I have some recommendations I provide in this video here, shameless plug, but it just seems to me that most of the Ito anime series that have released have felt more like cash grabs and less so passion projects. I think if one wanted to make a solid Junji Ito related anime, one of two routes must be taken. The first, find a team that's genuinely passionate about Junji Ito's works and will take the time and be provided with a solid budget that will allow them to bring his stories to anime form. A route seemingly taken by the team adapting Uzumaki. While the anime has been in development hell for a couple of years now, it seems that the team based on this letter, is hell-bent on delivering the best thing they can. As long as they're giving it their all behind closed doors and not Fortnite dancing around, I'm happy to wait as long as I have to for this anime to come out. The second and less straightforward option I see is one in which Junji Ito's manga work is not directly adapted, but rather, Ito himself is brought on board and paid a boatload of money, he deserves it, to provide a series of anthology stories that a team animates and produces alongside him. Something like an animated Twilight Zone, with Ito serving as the Rod Serling visionary of the production. I think a series in this vein will alleviate manga versus anime issues viewers have with animated Ito works, since these stories will be exclusive to an animated medium, with no real manga as a base comparison. A third idea is to just not make Junji Ito anime anymore. <laughs> 